Hi, I welcome one and all for this presentation on epigenetics. As you can observe here in this particular images that are shown, um, you can understand about monozygotic twins. Monozygotic twi twins are nothing but individuals who have exactly same identical DNA. As you can observe in the first figure, where two identical twins, uh, uh, though they have different hair color, what could be the reason? Uh, or probably a dog that is shown over here, some part of uh, one part of the eye is actually said to be white in color, the other one the color is actually totally different within the same individual. Or probably in the two other images you can see the eye color change in the human individual that is shown over here and as well as the coat color variations that is observed in the case of the same genetically identical agouti mice litters. What could be the reason? This led to actually understanding about a particular field uh, which is called as epigenetics. Uh, it's nothing but uh, where the same DNA, though it is present from exactly identical individuals, they actually are expressed differently in multiple ways. This led to actually understanding about this particular new field uh, which, which is called as epigenetics. This actually gave uh, 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 quite some interesting uh, answers on why indi individual or in identical twins have different hair colors or a single individual can actually have two different eye colors or probably uh, identical twin litter mates how they actually show different uh, coat colors. Conrad Waddington, an uh, British embryologist, uh, epigenes epigenesist or genesist I would also say, was the first to lay the foundation for the epigenetics field. Uh, as he coined the term epigenetics which actually means above or in addition to genetics to explain about differentiation. He had a very familiar analogy uh, to the epigenetics field with regard to usage of a, uh, epigenetic landscape where he speaks about uh, the usage of marbles which actually when they actually begin to roll on the landscape they can actually enter into any of the land groups and invariably would come to rest at a particular uh, after choosing one of the uh, uh, grooves or the inundations. This is actually in similar to the scenario of uh, even uh, a, a particular uh, cell when it actually begins, it begins as a stem cell basically and when it starts to differentiate it would start to commit itself to actually forming or moving itself into a particular lineage. Finally when it comes to rest after, after the differentiation process is initiated it would generally arrive at generating a particularly uh, end or a terminally differentiated cell type. Consider you are given a series of characters within a paragraph and when you want to read it invariably this is considered in analogy to the DNA sequence or your genome sequence. When I am just extending the same analogy you can actually consider that if you are going to introduce something like punctuation marks or question marks or maybe uh, even exclamatory mark so that would start to actually when you read the same sentences once again that is the DNA sequence now or the paragraph or the characters in the paragraph invariably it would start to make some sense basically. So the instructions that are basically stored in the DNA or the information that is basically present in the DNA how it actually codes for a protein basically isn't it. So the non-sequence dependent inheritance which we speak about that is the characters like the uh, introduction of the markers which are nothing but something like the question mark or maybe the uh, punctuation marks or the exclamatory marks that actually define basically how the information is read. So here the DNA is actually not changed only the information of how the DNA is read is actually changed. So in continuation to represent this uh, with the definitions for epigenetics, uh, three definitions are basically proposed. Uh, the very common one is actually the transmission of information through meiosis or the mitosis that is not based on the DNA sequence. And the second definition is it's a mechanism for which helps in the stable maintenance of gene expression states that involves physical marking the DNA or its associated proteins as I just now mentioned which is in similar analogy to the introduction of the exclamatory marks or the question marks or the, or the punctuation marks so on and so forth which actually makes the DNA sequence that is read uh, in a much more uh, uh, informative and actually uh, uh, much more uh, which gives better clarity to the information that is basically present there. Uh, mitotically, uh, the third definition goes on as mitotically or meiotically heritability changes in the uh, uh, genetic component that are not coded in the DNA itself. Most of the concepts of chromatin revolves uh, around the epigenetics. Uh, chromatin as you know is made up of DNA 
and protein two entities uh, the first level of compaction as you can actually observe because dna though it is a very long uh, a thread of molecule it, uh, it 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 has to be completely compacted or condensed and then put into a particular re, uh, cell which is actually of a very small size uh, dna is said to be double helical in nature and this uh, generates the first two nanometer short regions of stretches of DNA is actually said to be double helix in nature. That is the first level of compaction. In continuation to that, uh, these DNA molecules have to go uh, around or wound around uh, the histone moieties or the proteins which actually are made up of four subunits invariably. And when they are actually wound, it has to be wound one and a half times. And they actually, when you uh, 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 visualize it under a, a, a scanning electron microscope, you can actually observe that it is something like in the shape of a, a several set of histone beads around which the DNA is basically wound as a string. So this theory is actually called as a bead on a string theory, which is which is actually represents the how the chromatin basically uh, 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 appears under the microscope, and this is of the size of around 11 nanometer, and. Uh, these histone moieties or the subunits when when they are actually present uh, in the in the uh, to generate a structure which is called as a nucleosome and this is when actually four uh, subunits of the uh, histone moieties are as tetramer units invariably are joining with another tetramer and generate something which is called as an octamer and uh, these octamer components around which these uh, uh, the dna is still more compacted and bound around and this results in generation of something which is called as the 30 nanometer chromatin fibers of the packed nucleosomes and uh, on further compaction of this you can actually observe the uh, the, the fourth stage where it appears something like a 300 nanometer fibers and these uh, 300 nanometer nucleosome fibers actually are uh, similar in analogy to the uh, olden days telephonic cord where you can see that certain regions are actually said to be much more extended and certain regions are actually short in range and uh, this compaction further on folding and uh, furthermore uh, 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 wounding of the DNA when it actually happens this results in generating something which we call it as the solenoid fibers or the condensed section of the chromosome which are of 700 nanometer in size and this is what actually is what you observe in the metaphase chromosomes of mitosis uh, particularly which, uh, in a chromosome which is of around uh, 1400 nanometers containing all these uh, solenoid fibers I had earlier spoken about the modifications or the markings that you can actually observe in the uh, uh, DNA uh, set of characters like the introduction of uh, punctuation marks, exclamatory marks or a question mark. In similar to this, here you can actually observe that it is the DNA methylation or the histone modification. There are two possibilities or two entities I already spoke about in the earlier slide which is about the uh, either the DNA or the histones which uh, which actually forms up uh, the components both of these entities join together to form the chromatin so the modifications that are actually observed uh, are similar in analogy to the question marks or the punctuation marks or the uh, exclamatory marks which i spoke about in the dna sequence as you can basically observe over here in this particular image you can see that in certain regions that is actually the uh, the modifications which are happening in dna which happens to be the dna methylation in the case of histones, you have the tail regions at the C terminal end, basically, where uh, the presence of lysine and arginine residues, exactly at these residues, where you can observe the occurrence of certain other modifications like ubiquitination, acetylation, methylation, sumoylation, uh, so on and so forth. There are different ways how these histone tail regions can actually be modified. And uh, this results uh, in actually how the uh, DNA gets regulated or I would say that how the DNA gets compacted or it is actually uh, 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 loosened or unpacked invariably. So, so the packing and the unpacking of the DNA is basically regulated by these concepts of DNA methylation and as well as the histone modification. The methylation of the DNA happens at the cytosine residue, particularly at the fifth carbon position. And uh, as uh, you can actually observe over here, whenever the methylation of the cytosine residues actually happen, it means that that particular gene segment is said to be suppressed. 
and uh, as shown in the image over here whenever the dna is said to be loosely packed you can observe that there is acetylation or acetyl, uh, acetyl residue is being added to the histone moieties and this results in actually the dna being loosely packed and uh, whenever this is there the possibility of occurrence of transcription is actually said to be uh, uh, higher uh, the possibility of occurrence of transcription is said to be higher and the corresponding protein product formation is actually said to be uh, uh, higher in number but in case due to the involvement of an enzyme which is called as dna methyl transferases which actually causes the methylation of the cytosine residue which introduces the methyl groups to the cytosine residue this results in actually causing the methylation process happening to the histone residues or the histone moieties and this as well as the dna moieties so this invariably causes actually the compaction uh, um, of the dna moieties and uh, uh, when and this results in actually them becoming much more densely packed and slowly when they start to get become densely packed you also have the uh, because acetylation is actually a mechanism that is favored for uh, uh, for a, a loosely packed dna uh, the acetone moieties have to be removed that is actually taken care by another set of enzyme which is called as histone deacetylase this results in removal of the acetyl uh, acetyl group residues from the histone moieties or the protein component of the chromatin and results in actually causing the dna to be now uh, completely densely packed and so this densely packing of the dna or the compaction of the dna actually prevents the occurrence of uh, uh, binding of the rna polymerase enzyme uh, this this completely causes the suppression and uh, uh, prevents the uh, uh, dna transcription to actually happen we just now observe how the dna methylation results in actually the gene uh, being switched on or the switch off condition uh, genomic distribution of the dna methylation can be represented as actually 4% of all cytosines are actually said to be methylated 70 to 80% of all cpgs are actually said to be methylated if you observe in this particular image that is shown over here and these cpg islands what are these cpg islands cpg islands are nothing but gc rich regions these are generally observed just before the promoter regions of a particular gene and uh, uh, you know less than 2% of the genome is said to be functional and uh, these uh, gc rich regions one gc rich region is actually found in every 10 base pair short stretches in a region of totally around 1000 base pair sequences if you just consider so uh, here that is shown over here in this particular image this is this particular cpg island is actually said to be unmethylated it can uh, mo uh, more than as, as we have already seen 70 to 80% of all cpgs are actually said to be methylated in the case of humans 90 to 98 percentage of the genome where actually one cpg uh, present per 100 base pairs are majoritarily is said to be actually methylated form so either the cpg island is said to be methylated or the unmethylated form which actually is observed as uh, uh, observed could actually lead to the uh, a gene being switched on or being switched off and then favor the occurrence of or promoting the occurrence of the gene transcription process uh, because if it is actually said to be unmethylated invariably as shown over in this particular image this can enable the uh, binding of the rna polymerase to its promoter region and thereby cause the transcription of its uh, downstream target gene and if in case if it is said to be methylated then invariably the rna polymerase cannot interact with the cpg island region just before the promoter and then it can't actually cause the occurrence of gene transcription for the establishment of dna methylation pattern uh, three dna methyl transferase enzymes play a critical role uh, we have dnmt1 or dnmt3a and as well as dnmt3b Uh, dnmt 3a and 3b they have both been linked to a role in the establishment of dna methylation pattern in the early development of the stem cell particularly uh, whereas dnmt 1 is actually required to methylate a newly synthesized strand of dna after the cell has undergone the process of replication in order to sustain the epigenetic regulatory state you can actually as shown in this particular image you can see that both the uh, 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 parental strands now when they are actually said to be initially methylated they then actually slowly uh, demethylation needs to be established and there is actually the process of replication that is initiated as you know we follow in the case of humans a semi conservative mode of replication where each parental strand serves as a template for the synthesis of a newer strand and you can see that only in the newer strand or newly synthesized strand particularly by dnmt1 there is occurrence of methylation 
and this further needs to be demethylated once again in the second round and then you have a transient phase where actually both the uh, uh, parental and as well as the uh, the daughter stand is actually said to be completely demethylated and then further for once again de novo methylation require the importance of DNMT3A and as well as DNMT3B which particularly causes its uh, methylation and then uh, uh, prevents it from further replication process. Just by the DNA methylation established by the DNA methyl transferases, uh, we just now saw how the CPG islands are basically said to be uh, methylated or uh, not methylated. This results in actually the packaging or unpackaging of the DNA that was also observed. So thereby it is able to actually regulate the gene expression uh, primarily by the cytosine methylation occurring in mammals uh, by the usage of these DNA methyl transferases. In addition to that, uh, DNA methyl transferases are essentially required to maintain chromosomal stability and uh, uh, for cellular differentiation even like say for example you have an, uh, a stem cell and when it is actually starting to commit itself to differentiate to form a particular cell type invariably if the particular masking or the occurrence of a DNA uh, uh, methylation pattern actually enables it to form a particular kind of a cell type and uh, you know there are more than close to around 240 to 245 different cell types that are basically present in the human system and each cell uniquely has the same DNA or the identical DNA but how a particular cell type is basically formed or the occurrence of a particular cell maintenance is actually being uh, is occurring primarily due to this kind of a regulation that is mediated by the DNA methylation pattern that is happening on the DNA. Uh, uh, such a DNA methylation is also useful for uh, the occurrence of imprinting of the genes in the case of chromosomal inactivation particularly the X chromosomal inactivation or the dosage composition that is actually happening uh, and uh, uh, if in case there could be an aberration that could be established which can actually happen in the DNA methylation process because of the inhibition of these enzymes invariably can also cause the occurrence of cancer due to the carcinogens uh, when they are actually exposed to and uh, DNA methyl transferases are also important for uh, preventing the cellular senescence or the aging mechanism also. With this short introduction to epigenetics, I thank one and all for patiently listening.